I like to I like to greet all the brethren once we're here and from other places that you said Jackson View, Pastor Everald. Pastor Everald's not here yet. Still is he? Okay. Any other place? Everyone that are watching this service. I greet everyone, the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Matthew. Matthew 13. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 45 and 46. Matthew, Matthew 13, 45 and 46. Matthew 45 and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. When he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Church may be seated. The parables are very important for the church because there are ways for teaching the Gospels they call Jesus the good master and Jesus had such an ability a great ability and important to teach and of course all his teaching was geared towards his mission he had a mission which was a project that was established from the eternity which was exactly to rescue men what man had already lost from the beginning from the scene that entered into man's heart so there was a project God had a project in it and he came exactly to fulfill this project and in this project that was established from the eternity there were two important things for us the first was the basis because the four Gospels describing Jesus the theologians the historians like to speak about the biography of Jesus the four Gospels speaks about the biography of Jesus in fact the Gospel they set the base of the church structure on top of which the church will be would be built and it is interesting that the Bible is very special and it ha has such a uh, deep understanding that without people noticing maybe no one has ever said that but it follows a line that's very perfect because soon after the gospel um, comes the book of Acts which is the only historical book of the Old New Testament and the Old Testament had many historical books and the book of Acts is the only historical book and when Luke writes for 30 years a description of what happened to the church from the Pentecosts all the way to the last missionary trip of the Apostle Paul so it is the description of what the Holy Spirit began to do with the church and Jesus, when he teaches the church, that's why today the crisis of the of Christianity today is exactly people going astray from this because Jesus taught things in a very practical way and, and very didactic. Everybody speaks about um, modern didactics. And when I was in school, people, uh, the teachers back then, they used to speak already about the uh, modern didactics and even science has discovered that man had two ways to the two entrance to his brain two doors of learning and those are simple things the two doors of learning are the vision and the hearing 
So you learn by seeing and you learn by hearing. So what did they build? They build the audio visual. So in other words, when I put this on the board, you hear, you see, and you learn because you are seeing, you learn because you're hearing. So your learning is double. It is a techni technique of teaching. And today, we use this a lot in our seminars. We like to speak, but we also like to, is the motivational teaching. So, for example, when you hear and you see, you sometimes have 30% of learning. It's a little, right? But when you write down, you go up to almost 50%. That's why we suggest the brethren, when you ask the questions, and you, we tell them to write down, this is a way for them to increase their learning. Sometimes you may come to, uh, as you learn, to almost 80%. It's crazy, isn't it? But how do you teach it? When you teach, you, when you teach something, you fixate what you learned. You hear, you see, and you write. But when you teach, you go all the way up in your learning. Well, I was a teacher for a long time. That's why I like this kind of thing. So I learned a couple of things with my teachers. So let's go back to the text. Jesus is using here uh, didactic illustration. So when he speaks about the parable at the time, 2,000 years ago, he puts in people's minds an illustration. And on top of this illustra illustration, he speaks and that the kingdom of heaven is like a man that is looking for good pearl. So everybody links to the fact because at that time they already cultivated this. People was was already looking for pearls. This is come from the antiquity. So seeking per pearls, people they were they would go seek or dive or try through many ways to find a good pearl. So he tried to put in people's minds the following pearl. So everyone, how the pearl is formed, how does it happen? So people began to build an illustration in their mind of the pearl. So on top of this visual, is formed their minds, then he would teach. That's incredible. All the way back then. That's why some Greeks used to say that Je Jesus was an intelli intelligence above the normal. That's why people by people, the disciples said, the Greeks want to see you because he was, he was such, it was a great reach. So very well. So he says the following to the ones who are hearing, the kingdom of heaven is similar because they didn't know anything about the kingdom. What they knew was regarding the Old Testament. So Jesus is in a moment where there is a separation. Yeah, in fact, it is true. It's a moment, it's a limit between the new, the Old and the New Testament. The Old Testament was different. It's, a, it's the illustration of the prophet. God spoke in an individual. God used a man in an individual way. You see that in the story of these prophets. In the time of Jesus, everything is different because he was God. He is the Messiah. The Spirit he has the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So it was that different. So there was a change. So he's speaking about the kingdom of heaven. So he's bringing the kingdom of heaven. So when he says the kingdom of heaven, when he says the kingdom of heaven, he, they began to think kingdom. What is kingdom? They knew of this because they were under the, the control of the Roman Empire. So they knew that their governance was from Rome. So, so when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of heaven, so he's speaking about a kingdom that is not from here. So what is he trying to say? What is he talking about kingdom of heaven? Heaven is not here. So the, the Jews knew, because even the Sadducees as well as the Pharisees, they believe in heaven. They believe in eternity. They believed and God is customary to them. But when he speaks about kingdom of heaven, they say, hey, wait a minute, it's not something from here, it's from heaven. 
So when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is similar to a man, so they begin to create an illustration in their minds, a man that is looking for good pearls. And then when he finds one pearl of great price, and he goes, let's go of everything that he has in order to buy this pearl. So they were amazed and didn't know what to make of this. The situation was created and Jesus didn't tell them. Jesus didn't tell them the meaning of this. Just he just said the parable. Why is that? Because Jesus is preparing a basis for us, for the church. He's creating a teaching that was going to remain. So when I bring this topic here to the brethren, I'm bringing what Jesus left us the basis. What is he saying to us today? The kingdom. What is the kingdom? Kingdom is a people whose governance is of the king. Right? So they knew that. So what is the kingdom of heaven? Kingdom is a kingdom where the governance comes from heaven. So who has an ear? Listen. Remember the theme of this year? Who has an ear? Hear what the Spirit is telling to the church. So the kingdom is his. So what is his kingdom? It's the kingdom of heaven. So when he says the kingdom of heaven is similar to a man that is seeking good pearls. And when he finds the good pearl, who is he referring to? What pearl is this? that you find. He's referring to what? He's referring to his project. He himself, he is the pearl of great price. So, is he the pearl of great price? And why is that? Because he came exactly to give man salvation. Salvation is the pearl of great price. So, when he's saying, what he's saying is that when man, so now he enters in the, into the prophet, which is for us, it's for the church, not only for our time, but for the church also after the Pentecost. Paul preached about it. He preached in the same way. All the brethren from the church preached about it without even before the canon was established. But they preached what Jesus had already taught. So he says the kingdom is similar to a pearl of great price. So of course, so because there were there were pearls that were extremely valuable. So he found a pearl of great price. So he sells everything that he has in order to acquire the pearl. Who is the pearl? He's sending an enigma to the people that was hearing, which is for the church today. Who is the pearl of great price? Is he? He is the price of great price. A pearl of great price. So when man discovers this, what does he do? He uh, let go of everything that he has. So Jesus is not telling anyone to let go of their own personal goods to you know for him. This is something that's absurd. It's not it's a doctrinal mis mistake. The Bible never taught this that you are supposed to be poor and miserable in order to be a servant of God. Of course there are people that are poor that they have uh, little means but they serve God but they're also the pe rich people in America there is a lot of this rich people they were responsible for great missions are all over the world Africa Asia you you just Google you find out people that gave their lives they, they were very rich men God never was concerned about this in fact we don't own anything when you die do you take anything with you you buy a Mercedes of six hundred thousand dollars. You died, and you put a Mercedes with you to go where? Will the Mercedes go with you? The bank account's gonna go with you? No, it's not going. In fact, we don't own anything, and our life is just very quick. Man's time that the Bible speaks about Chronos is very short. I was speaking here with Bronilda, and he spoke in my ear. Do you remember Bruninho? Bruninho is going to get married. We need to pray for him. He's gonna get married to uh, you know him since he was two years old I know him when he was two years old I'm not gonna even tell his age but time passed very fast and you look at him then you try to guess my age it doesn't matter <laughs> so things are very fast life is very fast in fact we don't own anything so it's chronos our life and the Bible speaks about the Kairos which is the eternal 
So we, we are fleeting, like everything is fleeting. The creative work is fleeting, but the creative redemptive work is eternal. So when he speaks about the pearl of great price, he, we discover what is the pearl of great price. He, Jesus says, I came so that you have life and life in abundance. In the original text, in the Greek, in the Gospels, the Gospel was written in Greek. There are two words in Greek to speak about life. One that everybody knows. Dios, bios, when it's bios, when it's speak biology, and logos is study, so study of life, biology. Biology is ample. When you speak about medicine, it's a branch of biology. So biology is part of the medicine is part of biology. So life, life of bios is a creative work. It's physical life that we see. When Jesus came so that we may have life, he speaks about bios, but life in abundance, then he uses a different word. He doesn't use bios. He uses zoe. So it means a life, life beyond this one. Uh, a life that exceeds, which is the eternal life. So man discovers that he can be eternal. He has discovered truly the greatest riches. He has discovered that he can be eternal. What is physical, what is material of the creative work is over, but he continues. When he discovers this, he has discovered a pearl of great price. So here, the king of Hava is, is because he discovered this, that he can be eternal. He has discovered what is the most important which is something that goes beyond the limits of human reason. The kingdom of heaven is similar to a man that has discovered a pearl. But he, they also understood already back then. They knew, and today, there, there is an industrialized process of creating a pearl. But uh, back then, they didn't know how to do this. Today, in certain countries, even in Central America, they use a technique. Back then, they also use this. They, they dive the oysters that are special. They are able to produce pearl. Not all, all of them. What did they do? They opened it a little bit and throw inside of the oyster, sometimes a seed of sand, a foreign party inside of the oyster and they leave the oyster there on the water scientifically what a pearl what is the pearl scientifically a pearl is an organic reaction of the body of the animal in this case the crustacean which is the oyster against the foreign body that entered it creates try to repel that foreign body since it was not able to expel this foreign body, your organism creates a protection around this foreign body to protect the rest of the body. So it creates layers. So, Mother Pearl, it is a little layers are formed around this foreign body. So it begins to multiply the layers uh, in clearly. They're microscopic, but with time, they say that a pearl may be formed in about three years. Back then, they already knew that the pearl happened, it was created this way, could provoke the creation of the, the pearl on the oyster if they did that. So Jesus is teaching what? Jesus is teaching to us that salvation, which is the kingdom of heaven, because we are citizens of heaven, we are not American, Brazilians, this is something else. French, British, Russians, no, that's not what is important for us. We are citizens of heaven. The kingdom is from heaven. So, what is he saying? He's showing that what happens to each one of us, salvation is a process. Salvation is not an isolated act. Oh, save once, save forever, no. Salvation is a process, a dynamic process, continuous. When you fight continually, 
you know, to get rid of a foreign body, which is called sin. Sin is a foreign body because it entered because of man's disobedience. So the tendency of this to displease the Lord, but our struggle, continual struggle daily in our daily life to, o to defeat this, to overcome this, is that's how Jesus is formed, is generated, is a pearl that's being generated in us. So it's the perfecting of this, the understanding of this every day that passes by, every pain that we feel, every message that we hear, every time that we hear and see the, the Holy Spirit operating. So this process operating in us. So the pearl is being generated in us because Jesus is generated in us. Jesus, when he was born, Jesus is eternal, but he came when the Holy Spirit operated in our sister Mary. I remember that once I was coming home uh, many years ago and my daughters were small. We had a uh, neighbor and she was very well known there. Everybody knew her. Doctor, everybody, especially in the place where I live, everybody knew me very well. So uh, a lady came uh, to my gate and she greeted me. I was going to work and she asked me the following question. What do you have against Mary? And I thought, well, maybe it's uh, another neighbor. Who, what Mary? I thought it was somebody may have come up with something. No, she said, no. Mary, the mother of God. Uh, wait, wait a second. Uh, you're speaking about Sister Mary from the Bible. Oh, okay. We have nothing against her. Uh, we think Mary is a wonderful woman. She was a servant of God. How wonderful. You think like us? No, no, no. I don't think like you. What I'm saying is that Mary was a servant of God. A one amazing woman. It's a virtuous woman that God has chosen. That through her, the word may become flesh. That's what happened. So the Bible speaks about it, but she's not the lamb. She's not savior. She's not the pearl of great price. So who is the pearl? It's Jesus. So the entire project speaks regarding Jesus. So Jesus was generated in her through the operation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is generated in us also when the Holy Spirit operates. So, you know, you are far away and the Holy Spirit operated in your life, the seed was sown, the word was sown into your heart, the Holy Spirit came, operated, and then Jesus was born in you. So this is something that continues. The name of Jesus is salvation. The word, the name Jesus means salvation. Yeshua, which is the word Jesus in the Old Testament, is the name that Andrew Gabriel gave to him when Mary was pregnant. Andrew Gabriel told him hey, his name is going to be Yeshua, which means Jesus, salvation. So salvation in your life is a process. It's a continuous process against sin. So that's why there's no salvation in somebody who's remained in sin. Of course, we have our struggles, our daily trials, but there is a continuous fight against sin and that's how Jesus is being generated in us every day more and more that's why Paul says I no longer live but Christ lives in me the pearl of great price so this is what is most important for the church to understand so when Jesus says this parable he's saying all of this to be registered here to serve as a teaching for us so we understand this in this way so it's very simple, very simple. So you think that, that what in fact is a little bit of suffering of, of the oyster, right? To form the pearl, of course. Sin is, is something good to the world. People sometimes, they think that you can mix one thing with another. It's very common. This is sometimes what concerns us. People think that Jesus, Jesus is good. No, Jesus, of course, Jesus is good. Jesus is merciful. Yes, he is merciful. But Jesus does not love sin. Jesus loved the sinner, not the sin. But you're against 
these people that practice this and this. No, no, uh, about gender, no, we're not ga- against anything. But the acts, yes, biblically, they are contested, they are word of reproach. The Bible says it's a sin. So the kingdom of heaven is similar to a man that fights against this every time that you have. Jesus is being generated in you. There is a continual fight against sin. Jesus is in your life. Multiform and growing until comes a moment in which the pearl will be uh, harvested when you depart to the Lord because in fact life continues for the ones who belong to ki- to the kingdom or other things can happen or you'll be harvested and or we're waiting for the sound of the last trumpet and this also can happen that's when the pearl is going to be collected by the great uh, the owner of all of this who's the father he gave it all for us he's seeking this why is that because the son came exactly for this the mission of the son was this but Jesus places this with great clarity for the church see my brethren we have sometimes we I usually say that the the things that Holy Spirit does he does he does them independently independent of our own will even going over our own will me for example when I came to the church the church had three years of age and what I said from the beginning to this day I'm amazed I can tell you today that when I see the things happening that's truly behind this is an invisible operation and wonderful that we cannot understand how does it happen just so you have an idea sometimes I, I stop and I think how the the Holy Spirit acts, especially in this time that we're living. The prophecies are uh, and getting into a funnel for a final moment. Last month we received uh, a lady from the Philippines. I don't know how she found out about us. She heard her name. I don't know. And she watched the event Trumpets at Feast, the third episode this woman was there in Brazil and she said I want to know you guys and she told her story I'm from a family that is extremely rich one of the richest families in her country she ha- they have many uh, siblings and she they have any each one had a, a governess for each child that's how, how that's how she was raised and she converted and the family said the fa- faith that you chose you, then you, you need to leave you're not going to be in this family anymore and she said I'm not going to abandon my faith anymore and she was expelled from her family and she left without any right or anything she then she went to Ron- to Hong Kong she was young she had uh, graduated in archi- uh, architecture and she became a millionaire working as an uh, architect and she was telling us but she said I had a mission I'm going to evangelize my country and she went back and she left all the, her things in Hong Kong and she went back to her country only to evangelize her country and she said my country needs to know what I know she started many places of evangelization but she came to a moment she didn't know what to preach what to say and then she watched trumpets and feasts she found the message amazing she said that's what I was looking for and she looked for us you know to have access to our content and to relay to the people that are with her our content and the content is not ours it belongs to the Holy Spirit and she was very amazed and she took everything there there's even work here uh, in the United States that is linked to this 
then we stop and think how this woman found out about us. What happened to her? We didn't go after her. <coughs> how did it happen? Something crazy. I remember a while ago we were in a meeting and a lady came here. It was a meeting, a pastor meeting, and a young lady came and said, there are eight people downstairs that came here to speak with you, but they don't speak Portuguese. Then we came down to talk to them. There were eight people from Africa. There were six men and two women. No one spoke Portuguese. They all speak a dialect and two spoke French. We have a French interpreter and we brought them up to give assistance to them and one spoke and said we came to know you oh very good you are Maranatha yeah yeah then they said three years ago we left a traditional church because of a revelation the relation was Maranatha Jesus comes then we left we founded the church, but thought the name too ugly. <laughs> we put a name of the church, Philadelphia. Everything went bad. Everything was wrong. The, the bread just went away. And after a while, we met again, and the Lord said, You disobeyed me. How come we disobeyed? I said the name was Maranatha, because that's the last message before the second coming of my son and then they stopped and said how am I going to do it so go enter on the internet and look for the name Maranatha and they went there were many names then the Lord showed to one of them the Maranatha here in the United States and they called the pastor here in the United States and the pastor said it's best if you go to Brazil because we have a group there established in Brazil. We are here because of this. We never had contact with any of them. They knocked there like this. And one raised his hand and said, I have a lot of struggle in Africa because the, the, the country is very mystic. mystic. There is a lot of Evil, evil operations and the Lord has taught us I don't know what is the experience of the brand what is this the Lord has taught us to plead for the blood of Jesus <laughs> of course how interesting so another one raised his hand he spoke about he asked about spiritual gifts so then he said what is your experience that you have in consulting the word so how come <laughs> Because the Lord told, told us to plead for the blood of Jesus and to consult using the Bible. We had never had contact with these people. So you see there are things that are mysterious. Today, this country does. So the Lord has revealed to have a TV. We never we have an internet. We can't do it in haste because this time is passing by quickly. This message needs to be proclaimed. So my brethren, is the kingdom of heaven. It's not ours. It's not deacon A, B, C, or pastor A, B. Because we all will pass if Jesus does not come earlier. So the work of the kingdom of the Lord will continue until the sounding of the trumpet. So what the Jesus is showing to here, showing us here, is, is the basis. Why is Christianity is in crisis? Because he left this because why did it live here? Because the Holy Spirit stopped operating. Because when the Holy Spirit operates and this process continues in us, the struggle is process, process of sanctification, is struggle against sin. Because Jesus needs to operate in us, this pearl of great worth, because this life, because life is abundant life that He guaranteed for us through His death and the entire process that He has guaranteed to us. Amen? Let's sing a song.
There are clothes, spiritual gifts here. The Lord has shown a man that he is here. His life is, in fact, to spiritual storm, the trials, that, because the world, just, just about this, today's world, the enemy, is not showing anybody on the bonfires and crosses like the primitive church. The action of the action of the enemy is, is to put doubt in your heart and things in your mind, especially about people that know the Bible. The enemy brings incredulity and destroys the person. The Lord is showing that there is a man here in this situation. The Lord wants to change his interior today. This is easy. Just seek the Lord. The Lord wants to reveal himself to you. The Lord also has shown a man that has done things that are not pleasing to the Lord. He recognizes this. You need to fight against this, against sin. Lord want to because this man wants to have a new life that's that's good you need to hear the voice of God the world is something that is very interesting the enemy he, what he does at this moment which is a moment that he knows the prophecy the enemy knows the prophecy he knows the word so he knows that when Jesus was tempted he made reference to the Bible to Jesus so he knows the time so today, one of the things that the most uh, uh, important again the moment in which we are living is that the enemy tries in every way. Let me say, how can I say? He tried to create. Uh, it's even it's uh, re uh, destroy the creative work. God created man according to His imaging similar to it. so then uh, he causes man to do this thing that complete deviation from his creation God did not create man to do this God created man to be his, uh, his image but enemy comes here to destroy God's image so that's one of his actions so there is another in spiritual gift to what has shown another man his, his life, it feels like his life has no meaning. Somebody even told him that this vision is a man has no, no longer has any reason to live. Look, I'm a doctor. Depressions. Because I saw many pastors saying foolish things. They say that every depression is oppression. No, it may be. But there are depressions which are disease. But there are many times types of depression. There are depressions that are, that we say, exogenous. They come from outside to your inside because they have a reason. You have a family member, you have a son, you have a husband, your financial life is destroyed, you lost everything you had. This is a depression that comes from the outside. The moment created this is a depression that is easy to be treated. Psychiatrists think it's easy because they begin to work on what has motivated. But there are depressions. They are internal. They are endogenous. They don't have any reason. The person is, is depressive without any reason. They have a good life. And have, uh, uh, everything is normal. They have children, but they live without any pleasure to live. This is a serious depression. This is the one that leads men. They don't sin. The people that commit suicide. Which is people that are taking their own lives. This is a very serious depression. I believe that there is a person with some characteristic. The Lord has shown that have, have, takes no pleasure in life. Life has no meaning. But the Bible also says the following, that if the Son of Man deliver you, you, you truly be free. You need a deliverance. It is a deliverance. I had a patience, patience once. She was a very rich woman. 
but she was young, beautiful, she had a good marriage, and she came to my clinic, and she looked at me and began to cry. She cried, cried, cried. And we learned in, in college, in the classes of psychiatry, especially in the classes of therapy, that we learned this as well, that when the sick comes to your clinic and begin to cry, you should not interrupt it. You allow them to cry. Cry. Do not interrupt. Let them. Until the point when you find out an opening. And she cried, cried, and you, I let her. And she looked at me and apologized. I'm ashamed. I don't have control. And he said, no. You're okay. She said, I have everything. And I knew she, she had everything. She had a good husband. Last month, my husband took me to Europe and went on a trip, a cruise, and I came back. But I am still the same way. And now, in my birthday, he bought a car, and he bought a car, gave it to me. But doctor, the following, this, my problem is the following. I wake up in the morning, I look to the world, it's like the world is painted in black and white. There's no meaning for me. What do I do? Do you have any medication? Yes, I do. Oh, oh, good. What am I going to take? Then I s told her, no, you're going to do the following. Today, 7.30, you go here on this street, such and such. I'm going to give you the medication there. What? Where? That place. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, go there you don't have here? No. You go there. She, then she went. She went to the door and she said, yeah, you're here? And I said, yeah. I do. I go there? Here. I do both things. So so then you told, he, I told her, enter and watch the service and that's why I'm going, that's the place where I'm going to speak about the medication. She cried throughout the service when the service is over. We prayed for her. And I told him, the medication I need is this. You need Jesus for a life, in your life. And she converted, and her problem was over. It was a depressive person. It was depression. So this, this Jesus also does. And this is good. Amen? Wow. We want to uh, inform the brethren. The wedding of Bruno is Friday. Pray for the marriage of Bruno. What are you doing, Kelly? Your age is coming up. Your children are getting married. I already married my daughters. Now I can. Because I married the first daughter, the older. The month of the marriage. I prayed the whole month for Jesus to come that month. And Jesus didn't come. I was very disappointed. So, so when the second daughter got married, that month I also prayed and Jesus didn't come so I married all three I married all three and Jesus didn't come so then I said now I have to continue but this is so now Jesus is not praying for or Ronit is not praying for Jesus to come this month it's it, his mother <laughs> so I need to see so topic for intercession so we have a word you have already seen on our on YouTube or on the seminar, we made a, a work in Turkey. We sent a group of brethren, the pastors. They spent 20 days in Turkey. We went work about the seven churches of Asia. Everybody knows the Book of Revelations. The church there, there are cities that today, the cities. There, now, archaeologically, they are present in today still the seventh church of Asia Ephesus, Myrna, Pergamos, Teatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. We did a work there with those cities, and we're going to do a work making compare historic comparisons, historic archaeological and prophetic of what is in the seven letters of the book of revelations this is a, 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 a old desire of ours because when we started 
we're going to speak about Maranatha because it was the last message. And this is a work exactly to show the history of the church throughout these 2000 years until the last church, from the Pentecost, until the sound of the last trumpet. So we're going to have initially the the program on uh, the uh, network channel and we're also going to share this uh, video on YouTube so it is a work is very intense so uh, as it's very surprising the the press is as sought to us they are all actually amazed because they see that how can you survive you don't ask for money you don't you don't do campaign for uh, raise money and you do you can do all this the other day I had to explain to a, a reporter from uh, a newspaper in Brazil how can you do this no of course we have a professional life oh. and it is also testimony when I told this this reporter I said a brand here in the church they have volunteers they clean up the church a volunteer and I need to be vol a volunteer as well so this is our experience without criticizing anyone else they're not criticizing the brand oh but you go to heaven and the others not no we never said that this and we don't have this intention we have have a work the Lord has shown to us the work is of the Holy Spirit we started in, not in Brazil we started in Jerusalem we participate on this work and we are going to preach if I want to preach the same thing it's free no problem you can nothing prevents uh, them from doing this it's a product process that we need to continue to pray for this is the Lord renewed anything else yeah, no. no I didn't pray oh uh, I, s I spoke but I didn't pray oh boy uh, you're getting old <laughs> that's amazing I could have said all of this after praying with the laying of hands with the apostle, after the apostolic blessing, right? But if you mention to anyone, I will never return here I invite this church to stand up. I praise the name, Lord, for everything you have done in our lives, for what you have revealed, has operated. In your name, you say the wonderful grace of Jesus, love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with you. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now it's over. Let's just be seated.